the pesticide exposure because a lot of vegetables right. basically they end up being like a palette for chemicals <laughs> glyphosate it's just so uh, toxic for your mitochondria because superoxide because it damages mitochondria so this dismutase the enzyme helps protect the mitochondria so yeah with regards to diet i mean i don't know if you focus on that like primarily before looking at supplementation because like i mentioned a few things like um, pqq is like a i was looking at the, the actual food quantities you know if you go to cacao it's I mean, it's it's high as relative in terms of food in PQ, PQQ, but when you compare it to a supplement, it's it's pretty negligible. You're talking like micrograms versus milligrams. So, um, what, what would you think on? Uh, do, do you have a supplement, uh, or do you do you focus on foods that are high in PQQ? Honestly, no. I don't know that much about it. Actually, I probably should supplement with it. Um, I know are blueberries high in PQQ. Is that one of the things? Um, I think having? it's more like, no, no, I don't, I don't think it's PQQ. I think, uh, yeah, no, natto is high in it. Tofu, cacao, oh, okay. I think those are the main, oh, uh, red, oh, sorry, green bell peppers, I think as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I do, I I probably have a weirder philosophy of people's, if people have never heard me before around food. Um, I do eat vegetables. I honestly don't eat like a lot of vegetables. Um, and the reason is like one, you have to be very careful of where you source them. And then also mm. to uh, the pesticide exposure, because a lot of vegetables, right. okay. basically they end up being like a palate for chemicals, <laughs> meaning that they're 80 to 90% water. And even here in the United States, organic produce still has uh, pesticides on it. It's just less than normal produce. Um, so I do try to be careful with how many vegetables I consume, because that ends up again, like I said, it's kind of just like a serving plate for pesticides because mm -hmm. there's the pesticides absorb into it and they hold so much water. That's where a lot of those are held. So I'm not saying vegetables are unhealthy or anything like that. I'm just more conservative in the ones that I eat and how often I eat them. Um, I actually like from a diet, if like someone wanted to hear my diet, it would basically be like, look like this. I eat grass fed, grass finished beef, uh, organic chicken for the most part, I'd say like 80 to 90% beef. And then like the rest is like organic chicken and turkey, uh, white rice, white potatoes, and then probably like a little bit of oats, um, you know, and everything is organic. And that sounds like very, very much almost like an elimination diet. Um, but for me, I like to think of things like what's kind of like the shortcut to get me the fastest results. And I think those like keeping them plain. And then obviously too, I'd throw in like healthy fats. So, you know, like olive oil, um, grass fed butter, coconut oil, not a ton, but enough to, you know, like cook the food and everything. Mm. Um, and that's pretty much it. And I think, again, that's in the context of me being hormonally optimized, using testosterone, using peptides and everything. Um, so for someone that's not doing any of that stuff, is that the best diet? I don't know, but that's kind of like what I adhere to. And it's really high protein. It's carbs when I need them. And it's, you know, carbs without a lot of fat added to them. Um, and that's it. And then, you know, I eat those on my training days. And then when I don't train, you know, I'll have those just in much less, you know, lower quantities, mm. uh, on my fasting days. So, okay. Yeah, no, that actually gets me on to my next question about pesticides. Cause I mean, like stuff like glyphosate, it's just so, uh, toxic for your mitochondria. It's just like, yeah, it's terrible. Um, yeah. And so, as you say, I mean, like, because I, I do eat a lot of vegetables and then so I, I, I have to really be mindful of trying to get the worst offenders out, you know, like your spinach, which is covered in pesticides. So I have to try and buy organic, but obviously, yeah, it's just, it's just a delicate process of, because as you say, like some people, you know, people used to do the juice diet 20, 30 years ago and then <laughs> without unknowingly, they're drinking tons of this juice and it's covered in pesticides. And then, yeah, it's just shocking amount of damage it can do to your mitochondria um yeah so i guess that's what's one pathway is just by limiting your exposure to pesticides so if anyone's watching like the, the i don't know if you know that there's that uh, list the dirty dozen and then the clean 15 do you know that one so you've got like the worst offending fruits and yeah veg. i don't i have heard you know like it, it's almost it seems like the more water soluble something is the worse it is and the more insulated it is from like water exposure is probably better but i haven't heard of that the list specifically 
Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's a certain things. I know, in, as you just mentioned, in America, the, the regulation is a little bit different. I know in the UK, say with apples, they're still bad in this country. But in America, I know that you, the tolerance is like, I think over there, you can have 50 times more of some kind of some kind of herbicide than in the UK. But they've changed those regulations because of, uh, you know, like uh, us now importing produce from America. So it's, it's, it's a bit up in the air. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just a tricky one trying to get the perfect diet because, um, as you say, it's just trying to eliminate those things from it. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's certain foods. I mentioned about um, super oxide dismutase and then obviously indirectly. So then all these antioxidants can, uh, you know, impact because um, super oxide damages mitochondria. So this dismutase the enzyme helps protect the mitochondria. So, I mean, do you... Do you focus on any like even supplementing, with say with spirulina? I know, I know there's, I know you say you're quite strict with vegetables. I know, like I'm trying to think what else has it like wheatgrass or uh, broccoli, that kind of thing. Do you have any of that? Uh, yeah, I actually use it's a supplement. Um, I actually found one now. I think it's what's that company called? I don't even remember the name of it. But basically, they have a capsule. I've always, for the longest time, I've made my own blend. It was really, really disgusting. Um, and it would make you gag, but it would basically be like activated charcoal powder, uh, spirulina powder, chlorella powder, powder, uh, and I would add in glycine to that. And all of those things together, they all kind of work to enhance uh, like the integrity of the cell membrane and especially exposure to like vegetable oils or pesticides mm-hmm. or um, other toxins. And uh, that does really well. It helps with detox really well. Um, it was disgusting, but there's a company – um, I forget the name of it right now. You can find it on Amazon, but they actually have all those like in a capsule. And I think it even has zeolite, which, um, I think is also, uh, a mineral that works really well to help clean the microbiome. But yeah, all the things are amazing. And I think when we look at them, at least with the powder, um, hopefully it's organic if you're getting the powder. And I think in terms of like gut irritation, I think more people have gut irritation probably from vegetables than they realize, whereas I don't tend to experience that with the powder. So like I know if I eat like a ton of vegetables, it ends up causing me bloating and gas, especially if it's like broccoli or something. Um, whereas if I use the powder, it doesn't. And I think I still reap the health benefits of using those. And I think, you know, in my experience, it does really like if you have a cheat meal or I don't drink alcohol, but someone drinks alcohol, you use those, you know, concurrently together. Um, it does a really good job just helping you detox whatever damage you did to your body a lot faster and kind of accelerating the detox and getting those things out of the body so yeah 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 for sure like i said i was i'm trying to have a lot of these as you say like chlorella as well and then that obviously works in conjunction if you're doing the sauna because it's just sweating just so much more powerful than pissing out um, toxins sweat is like the kind of the wave really to clear them out of your body yeah and then Sorry, I was just going to say, um, what's the other one? Um, so furophane as well. That's another mm. potent thing for, uh, yeah, you know, another antioxidant that protects the mitochondria as well. Yeah. Yeah, I really like injectable glutathione too. I know that's more uh, along the, it gets on the lines of like injecting and so people kind of shy away from it. Um, but if there's one thing like I found that works even stronger than those, it's injectable glutathione. So I think for someone, especially if you're drinking, you know, God forbid, but, um, you know, if you have like, you know, cheat night, eat a bunch of junk food, even just being exposed to the environment, I regularly use usually three to four times per month, at least like a hundred to 200 milligrams of injectable glutathione. Um, and that works amazing, um, for just detoxing the body. And also too, I personally get, definitely sort of a calming effect from it. And I think for a lot of Mm. people that run businesses or stressed out, uh, it ends up bringing your liver enzymes down. So even if you're someone that trains a lot, typically people that are athletes or hardcore, you know, into sports or training, um, a lot of times after workouts, your liver enzymes will be elevated and it does a really good job of restoring Mm. liver function for people. So I love injectable glutathione. And I think compared to some of that other stuff, that's good. You know, those are like a five out of 10 where injectable glutathione is like a nine out of ten so mm-hmm. yeah yeah for sure I'm, I'm doing it in the moment and yeah i mean getting back to diet but yeah because uh glutathione getting it from food like i mean asparagus is high in it but then that's sort of try and tell these people like if you're doing something like glutathione um injections of it then it's just it eclipses the amount that you get from food or even like supplements for glutathione it's just you know it's 
poor bioavailability, isn't it? So, I mean, even if you get the liposomal stuff, it, obviously I've I have heard you know good reports from it. It's it's not bad. Or, or doing NAC, obviously. I mean, going going talking about the supplement route, which we'll get onto in a minute. But um, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of uh, injectable glutathione. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I guess with diet, I mean, it can only, and then it, I guess it's just having a broad range of antioxidants. I mean, what about, would you, could you say, you're, obviously you're quite careful with your vegetable intake, getting the right things and not anything bad, but what about green powders? I mean, do you just do you just stick with that, that, that mix you mentioned or do you, do you do anything else to try and boost that, um, that intake? Not really. Um, a lot of times I'll add in psyllium husk powder um, and that acts as fiber and it also works to like detox the colon really well. Um, so I'll do that usually like on average, like one to two times per week. Um, but that works really well. And for people that like have digestion issues, it ends up cleaning out the colon. So, um, I wouldn't say there's really that many more like, you know, superfood supplements I use, but I do use, um, psyllium husk powder, uh, to kind of get things going. I don't really struggle with constipation at all, but, um, it definitely helps people that are constipated. And I think for anything, just colon health, it keeps everything squeaky clean down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess, uh, what about a B complex? Would you, do you, do you take that to kind of just support your mitochondria, like the cofactor nutrients? Yeah. So actually there's one from global healing center. I get, you probably should be able to get that in the UK too. Um, but it's like a methyl cobalamin vitamin B12. Mm. Um, and it also has a couple others in it too, but it's just like a liquid one. Um, I really like, really like that one. Um, it just helps a lot with energy. And also too, I'm a big proponent of metformin. And so mm. if you do have any sort of like impairment with like methylation of vitamin B, which I don't, but I still just take it alongside metformin. I think everyone's that's using metformin should make sure that they're doing like a pretty good amount of vitamin B12. Um, but I take that alongside with it and I've taken that for years and it does amazing. So yeah, 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 yeah for sure. 